did you know that in EVE Online, the placement of your modules on the fitting screen does actually matter? Did you know that your first impressions of a module often aren't quite the full story, and that you can squeeze just a little bit extra performance out of them? Did you know that overheating isn't just what I do whenever the sun comes out here in Zimbabwe, but also a powerful mechanic in EVE Online that might just save your ship? In this video, I'll teach you everything about overheating, why you'd want to do it, how it works, and how not to burn your onboard modules to a crisp trying to figure it out for yourself. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi, and welcome back to another lesson for the Cat Skull Academy. In this video, we're going to be discussing overheating and how you can use this to squeeze out that little bit of extra performance from various different modules on your ship. We'll have a look at how overheating can be used to get better effects from a plethora of different modules. We'll look at the upsides of this and the downsides. We'll talk about how heat damage works and how you can repair damage and how you can minimize that. And we'll also take a look at the thermodynamics skill in order to better understand how all of this ties together. If you find this video useful, please make sure to hit like, subscribe for more content like it, and if you have any questions at all, ask in the comment section down below, or come join us on the Cat Skull Discord, linked in the description of this video. While you're down there, if you are new to this game, you can get yourself 1 million free skill points by clicking my referral link, even on an existing account, and we do have Cat Skull as a corporation in EVE Online if you're new to the game and just want some friendly folks to help teach you. Anyway, all that said and done, let's jump right in. Before we take a look at any of the specific pros and cons for overheating modules, I think it's worth spending a few moments to talk about how to actually do this in the first place. When you're undocked and in space, whether you're flying around or in combat, as you look at your action buttons, you may notice that some of your active modules, specifically any weaponry, any tanking modules, any propulsion modules, and any tackle modules, may have this little green line above them. This can be very hard to mouse over, but if you do, you'll see that it says turn on overload. Clicking this will illuminate that bright green, and then clicking it again will turn off that overload. Now that in itself can be very finicky to do, especially in a high stress situation, so there are fortunately other ways to do this. You can also right click the module and go turn on overload from the contextual menu, and same again for turn off overload. You can also use shift and whichever key binding these are on. So the shield booster here you can see is on my F3 space, so shift and F3 as the default key bind will activate the overload, and I can press shift and F3 again to turn that back off. Now sometimes you want to overload a whole load of different modules in one go. You can do that with these buttons here on the left. You can overload an entire rack in one go. If you want to overload all of your high slot modules in one go, you click this top one and you'll see it lights up and all of my high slot modules will go on to overload as well. If I click the middle one here, this is overloading the mid-slot rack. That has now overloaded all three of my mid-slot modules that are fitted in those slots. Again, I can click it again to turn those all off. Finally, if I were to click the bottom one, then all of my low slot modules would be overheated as well. However, I don't have any fit to this particular ship. The, uh, the only low slot modules on this ship are passive modules which cannot be overheated. But it's worth noting that whilst they can't be overheated, they can still take the damage from other overheated modules nearby. We'll talk more about that later, but you will see it in action in just a moment. So I'm now going to use Shift and F3 to overload my shield booster. I'm then going to press F3 to activate it. It's worth noting that when you have the shield booster, when you have the overload turned on, the negative, the effects of that boosting will only happen at the start of the very next cycle. It's same if you go to turn that off, those overloading negatives will only stop at the end of the current cycle. Basically, the pros and cons switch on and off at the start of that module cycle. Cycling. Now you'll notice that as I'm using this overheated module, there is a little red bar beginning to fill up around the outside of the shield booster and of the stasis webifier next to it. This is heat damage, and if that ever completes the full way around, that module will become unusable. We refer to this as the module being burnt out. 
Now there are two ways to repair this damage. The first is to dock up at a station and then use the repair function at that station. The other is to use nanite paste, which can be used in combat, but naturally is a resource that does cost instead. You can buy nanite paste from the market or from your industrial friends, and I will showcase that in just a second. Essentially again, if that bar ever fully fills all the way up around on any of those modules, that module becomes unusable until it has been replaced or repaired. So we're going to switch that off now and you'll see there, we now have three damaged modules. I can right click on any of these and I can go to repair because in my cargo hold somewhere we should see nanite repair paste. I'm carrying 96 nanite repair paste so I can go repair on that module or heck I could also right click and repair all modules and it'll start to use that nanite paste to repair the damage that I have done to those modules. You may have noticed as well that I'm dealing damage not just to the module that is active. We'll talk more about heat damage later on, but bear in mind, you've seen that in action now, so remember that for later. All right then, let's actually talk about why you would want to overheat any of your modules in the first place. Remember, the four broad categories of what can be overheated are propulsion modules, tackle modules, tanking modules, and weaponry. They have to be active modules as well, and if you don't see any overheating stats on the info page, well, it just means the module can't be overheated. So let's start off by having a look at the Rocket Launcher 2s that I have fitted. If we go to Show Info, here you can see that with this little icon here, this means we're looking at stuff about what happens if you overload or overheat that module. The game does kind of use overheating and overloading interchangeably, so if you see either of those terms, it means the same thing. Now we've got our usual stats here for the Rocket Launcher, its rate of fire, so on and so forth, but we then also have an overload rate of fire bonus of negative 15%. This means when these Rocket Launcher 2s are overloaded, they will cycle 15% faster. Faster cycle times means more rockets in space, means more damage to the opponent that you're shooting at. This comes at the cost of 0.64 HP worth of heat damage to that module and things nearby it, as we'll discuss later on in the heat damage section. Essentially, that amount of damage being spread out across nearby modules and thus the possibility of them overheating and turning off. It's also worth noting you do require the thermodynamic skill at least to level 1, but again, we'll talk about that more later on. If we move now to the mid slots, here I have a small C5L compact shield booster. So let's have a look at this one statistics. We go to the show info page. Again, we can see everything like its standard shield bonus, how it's uh, repairing its cycle time, so on and so forth. Here you can see that when you have this overloaded, we have a duration bonus of negative 15%, which means the shield booster cycles 15% faster, giving you those heals 15% more frequently. Then we also have a shield boost bonus of 10%. That means that we are cycling faster, which is going to negatively affect your uh, capacitor, please bear that in mind, but it's also going to increase the amount that is boosted by 10%, bigger heals more frequently. I'm sure you can see why that could be a useful thing. Again, the heat damage caused by this is 0.64 HP and only requires thermodynamics level 1 in order to do. If we move now to our tackle modules, the Stasis Weber Fire. Here you can see we've got our usual optimal range of 10 kilometers with this particular Stasis Weber Fire, but then we have an overload optimal range bonus of 30%. Now a quick bit of mathematics here says that when this Stasis Weber Fire 2 is overloaded, it's going to go from 10 kilometers of optimal range up to 13 kilometers because it's a 30% bonus. This can be really useful if an enemy just happens to be orbiting just outside of your web range. You can't quite catch them, you can overheat to catch them, and then when they're inside your standard web range, then you can turn off the overheat and just hold them there as normal. It doesn't affect the actual amount that they're slowed by, it just affects the range. That can change depending on the modules, so do take a look. It's worth noting this one has a heat damage significantly larger of 4 HP heat damage. That's a lot more than the 0.64 we saw before, and again, worth bearing in mind. 
Finally then, let's open up the Afterburner 2. Again, we can see we have a standard maximum flight velocity bonus here of 162%. We've got all our other skills here, but now we have an overload speed bonus of 50%. That means this 162 is going to go up by a further 81%, giving us a total of 243% speed bonus from this afterburner when it is overheated. And if that sounds insanely good, just be aware that that comes at a heat damage of 7.68 HP. That's more than du almost double the Webifier's damage, and it is ultimately a lot more. More than eight times the amount of damage that the shield booster or the rocket launches would also put out as heat damage. Now, ultimately, those are just some examples that I have fit to this ship, but the rules are fairly broad. If you're looking at turrets and missile launchers, then all kinds of missile launcher will get a bonus to rate of fire when overheated. That is standard, whether it is rockets or light missiles, heavy assault missiles, torpedoes, whatever, it is always a missile launcher rate of fire bonus that those get. Turrets, on the other hand, the short range and long range versions do have different bonuses. The short range version of turrets, like blasters or autocannons, for example, will get a bonus to their raw damage per shot. It increases their alpha damage. Whereas the long ranged turrets, like beam lasers, rail guns, or artillery, for example, those are going to get a bonus to their rate of fire. Note that increased rate of fire will, again, also mean increased capacity use if you're using lasers or hybrids, for example. Now, if you're looking at overheating your uh, your shielding modules, then again, this has a lot of different effects. Shield boosters, armor repairers are going to get increased repair per cycle and faster cycle times. Again, the faster cycle time does negatively affect your capacitor usage, but it increases the bonus. Ancillary shield boosters and armor repairers should pretty much always be overheated, as they have a limited number of effective cycles anyway, so you may as well just want to use those to the best of your ability. Active resistance hardeners can be overheated to increase the damage resistance they provide. Um, this means that overheating can also benefit some types of buffer tanks and passive shield tanks because you do still have active modules that can be overheated. Finally, remote shield boosters and armor repairers, although they're technically high slots and in my head weaponry for this, those get a reduced cycle time again. Um, it reduces the delay before the first cycle lands. For remote shield boosters, that means the delay between the first and second cycles is a little bit faster. It just means more heals per second, right? Nice and straightforward. If we're to talk about propulsion modules like your afterburners and your micro warp drives, then essentially this always provides a 50% speed bonus. This can be really useful in a pinch. In PvP, positioning can be absolutely vital, so getting into position that little bit faster can be really, really useful. I was actually out in a Federation Navy Comet the other day doing some faction warfare, and I managed to take out a Kestrel who was quite surprised that I managed to catch him, and that's because I overheated my afterburner to get in into that range quickly, whereas he was trying a kiting fit and it just didn't work for him. Finally then, tackle modules. These are things like stasis webifiers, uh, points and scrams, that kind of thing. This is always going to be a range bonus, and this is always really useful to do. Again, in PvP, if you really want to tackle something as you're landing on grid, you can actually activate that overheat whilst you're in warp, so that the very first cycle is overheated and you can just grab an opponent a lot faster. It's also worth noting that you can simulate how a module is going to be affected by overheating it using the simulation screen of the fitting page. If you click on the simulation button here, you can click on a module and then you can actually click it again to go into an overheated module when it gets this red box around it. Here you can see now that the range bonus of this Stasis Web of Fire 3 is now 13 kilometers. If I click that all the way back to just a standard active module, you'll see it returns to 10 kilometers. Let's overheat it again just to specify, boom, 13 kilometers when it is overheated. Same can be said here for the 1 Mega Newton Afterburner 2. If I see this as a standard active module, this makes my maximum flight velocity 914.67. If I overheat it, 1190.75. That's almost micro warp drive territory. Finally, the shield booster up here, 41 HP bonus per two seconds. Click this, and suddenly it becomes 45 HP bonus per 1.7 seconds. A lot faster cycle time. 
We can then do the same across the overheat at the top here, and we can watch our DPS here shoot all the way up. You can go in and actually have a look at the stats here as well. 72 HP kinetic damage compared to other things as well. You can just have a look at those stats and how it's actually going to work. Uh, so damage per second is 45.3 there on a standard flight, whereas if I overheat it, that d damage per second becomes 53.3. So you can simply simulate all of this as well to see what that will look like without having to actually try it in the field and damage your modules. Speaking of damaging your modules, yeah, there is a downside to overheating as well, and we do obviously need to talk about that. Essentially, when you overheat a module, it is going to start taking heat damage, and it is well worth specifying right from the start that heat damage is not related to normal damage. Taking heat damage on your modules will not affect your HP on your ship, on your shields, on your armor, on your structure in any way at all. Also, despite it being called heat damage, it is not in any way related to thermal damage. Ergo, anything that increases your resistance to thermal damage has no effect on heat damage when applied to your modules. Now, it's worth noting as well, you can check how many hit points a module has by again going into show info. Structure hit points here of a small C5L compact shield booster, for example, is 40 HP. And that's pretty much standard across any module. There are some that do differ, but almost every module in the game has a standard 40 hit points worth of structure. This is only affected by heat damage. Now, as for the actual mechanics of heat generation and damage, this is where things get a little bit more complicated and it's quite hard to demonstrate this live, so you are going to have to just bear with me on this one. Essentially, heat damage is not dealt reliably. You may have noticed earlier that when I overheated the shield booster and activated it, it didn't just fill up the red bar in a sequential motion. It didn't just kind of go up every time it cycled. It happens at random intervals, and that's because essentially it is done on a mechanic of heat generation, not straight up damage. Essentially, for every module that you have active and overheated on a rack, the more heat builds up on that rack. So if I've just got my shield booster overheated, then my mid-slot rack is going to start heating up fairly quickly. But if I have my shield booster, my stasis web of fire, and my afterburner all overheated, that rack's going to heat up very quickly indeed and it's going to essentially now have more chance of causing damage to other modules on that rack. Because as you saw earlier, I had the shield booster activated and overheated, but it was actually the stasis webifier that took most damage from that. It should be noted that of all the different types of modules, propulsion modules in particular cause a lot of heat to build up. Therefore, you do need to be careful about overheating your propulsion modules because those will generate a lot of heat in a fairly short amount of time. On that subject as well, it's worth noting that faster cycling modules tend to generate less heat per cycle, but because they're cycling so quickly, it's a small amount frequently, so it does build up quickly. Just bear that in mind. We can also talk about the different sizes of ships here as well. Frigates build up heat a lot quicker than battleships do. The bigger your ship, the slower the heat regeneration happens. You can kind of think of how big that ship is and thus there's more space for the heat to fill, if that kind of makes thermodynamic sense. It makes sense to me. It just means that if you are a frigate pilot, you are going to notice the downsides to overheating modules a lot quicker than if you're a battle cruiser or a battleship pilot, for instance. But anyway, let's actually talk about how that damage occurs. Essentially, each heated cycle of any module has a chance to deal damage to the heated module or to other modules on that same rack. And the chance of heat damage at the end of a cycle increases with the level of rack heat. This means that early on, the chances of getting a bit of damage from overheating something isn't too high. But the longer you leave that running, the higher that rack builds up heat. Things like having your afterburner active, having multiple things overheated on the same rack, as that rack gets hotter, the chances of damage being dealt are increased. 
Now at the start of this video I also teased that the layout of where you put your modules does actually matter. And this is because essentially modules will actually deal damage to ones that are closer to them faster than they will ones that are further away. So looking at the mid slots on this Hawk for example, if I were to overheat the afterburner at the bottom end of the rack, it's less likely to do damage to the shield booster at the top end of the rack. If I activate either the shield booster or the afterburner with it overheated, chances are I am going to do some damage to the stasis Weber fire as well. It's kind of up to you how you choose to fit this. Because the stasis Weber fire can take a bit less damage because it takes four hit points worth of damage compared to the shield booster only taking 0.65, you might decide you actually want to put the shield booster in the middle here so that it takes that little bit less damage. Whereas the boost, the uh, afterburners and the stasis Weber fire having that higher damage should theoretically go on the outside. The reason I've done it this way is because essentially the uh, the stasis Weber fire is less likely to be actively overheated than the other two. I want to push that afterburner quickly when I'm chasing after someone. The Weber fire is probably only going to be activated for maybe one cycle on overheat, whereas the shield booster is the kind of thing I am likely to want to overheat for an extended period of time in order to reduce the amount of damage taken. Therefore, I kind of want the shield booster to be as far away as possible from the afterburner burner so that it takes as little damage as possible and vice versa. This does mean that when you're fitting different modules, their layout absolutely matters. And if you are using a ship that has multiple high slots like this, again, theoretically, I should have a gap here somewhere. I should put two on this edge and two on that edge, which means there'll be less overheating actually going on. And if you're using a ship with multiple utility high slots, you should spread those out between the high slot modules if you intend to overheat them. And you might be saying to me, hang on, Benzio, I've watched a few of your videos now and you just stack your modules modules in this really obvious way where all of the guns are on one side and all the utilities on the other. Yes, because those are ships that I'm not intending to overheat frequently. If you are going to be overheating frequently, it absolutely works best to space your modules out either with empty spaces, like would be the case here on this Hawk, or on a ship that perhaps is using, say, neutralizers or Nosferatus that aren't overheatable, you can put those between groups of your turrets. So something that has, say, six high slot, mod uh, six high slot turret hardpoints and eight high slots, you could put two turrets followed by a Nosferatu, then two turrets followed by a neutralizer, and then the final two turrets. That way, when you overheat the top rack, the heat generation isn't as big as it otherwise would be from all six of those modules being grouped right next to each other on the map, generating a lot of heat together. Finally, as with most things in EVE Online, there are skills that affect this. And if you've been paying attention to this video, you should have already garnered the name of that skill. It is the Thermodynamics skill, and it can be found under the engineering tree of the skill catalog. If we mouse over thermodynamics here, you can see it says advanced understanding of the laws of thermodynamics allows you to deliberately overheat a ship's modules in order to push them beyond their intended limit. Also gives you the ability to frown in annoyance whenever you hear someone mention a perpetual motion unit reduces heat damage by 5% per level. I love the little joke in the middle there. But ultimately what this is going to do is first of all allow you to start overheating your modules to begin with. You want to train this at least to level 1 nice and early on so that you can start overheating modules. Beyond that, it's a flat 5% reduction to heat damage per level. So here I have thermodynamics trained to level 4. Level 5 is in my queue, but oh my goodness, there's so much other stuff going on right now. Essentially, at level 4, my heat damage is reduced by 20%. Definitely worth getting this one up at least that high. I would recommend getting this all the way up to 25% with the full level 5 training, but it is quite a long time to finish training that last level of skill. It's down here at the moment with 11 days and 17 hours left of training on it, but well worth looking into if this is something you're going to be doing frequently, which if you're a PvPer, absolutely is. 
Anyway, folks, that's everything for this lesson on thermodynamics and overheating your modules. Hopefully this has given you a better understanding of how to overheat your modules, why you would want to, and how to understand the repercussions of doing so. Remember that if this is a mechanic you intend to utilize a lot, make sure you are training the thermodynamics skill, you are carrying a lot of nanite repair paste in your cargo hold, and, well, just take it easy. There's nothing worse than going into an Abyssal dead space accidentally leaving something overheated for too long and burning out several of your modules. Remember that makes them completely useless until fully repaired. Taking a small amount of damage to your uh, modules doesn't affect them at all, they don't decay. If you've taken 10%, 20%, 50% heat damage on a module, it doesn't matter, the module still works exactly as it would otherwise. But the second you hit that 100%, that module's gone until fully repaired. Anyway, folks, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. Come find me and the other guys on Discord, linked in the description of this video. Grab yourself 1 million free skill points if you haven't already by clicking my referral link. Otherwise, thank you for all your support, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!